Hey everybody, all of you divas and any of you kings who happen to come in and tune in to the Divine Feminine Astrology Reading, I am Carla Sanders, the Cosmic Crone, and we have a full moon in Pisces. Um, so uh, I've got the reading right here ready for you. It is a gorgeous autumn day in Maine, not quite autumn, we're still a week before the equinox, a little over a week, and here is my, hi Corinne, good to see you. Um, I'm here in my studio in the barn, and it looks like a barn, and it's a little chilly like a barn. Uh, today is a cool day. Hey, thank you, beautiful right back at you. Uh, I've already been swimming today, this is the season, I'm just going to chit chat for a little while, uh, catch you up with what's been up since that last, the new moon, the Virgo new moon, which was two weeks ago, not even, and it feels like a year. This has been incredibly eventful moon cycle. It feels more than others. I swim every day because it's getting colder and every swim in September could be the last. Um, and it's just, it means so much to me. And I'm finally, my body is finally strong and the water is getting cold. It's not fair, but I live in Maine. That's what it's like. And then, of course, the garden is producing like mad. I had a zucchini this big yesterday and a tomato hornworm this big. <laughs> so I found that before it ate my tomatoes down to sticks. So this is, this is the season. The sun is in Virgo. The harvest, Virgo is... A, an earth goddess. Um, she represents the virgin, the, vest, the vestal virgins, really. She's very much akin to Vesta, who has figured big in the astrology recently. And she's, uh, you know, in the northern hemisphere, she represents the harvest season, especially in Maine, you know, abo up above uh, the northern tier, um, northern United States and southern Canada. September is when the food comes in, and it all comes in because you could get the first frost any minute, and the growing season is over. So this is, um, it's a, I guess this is the same in Europe where you are, Corinne. Um, it's just, it's intense. It's an intense time of harvesting, of awareness there is so much to do outside and you can feel the uh, hunkering down coming in you know any minute now um, so this is this sun sign of virgo and then the pisces full moon is just so poignant it it has it carries that energy the signs pisces and virgo seem to carry a lot of emotion and feeling and poignancy to them. So what's going on? Let's get into the chart. Well, the first thing, Virgo, the sun is in Virgo at 2105. This is happening just after midnight where I live in the East Coast United States. So it is at 033 a.m. Um, so it, it'll still be Friday the 13th uh, for any other time zone west of the East Coast. And so 2105 Pisces for the moon. And it's an interesting collection of planets in Virgo and Pisces. The, all the personal inner planets have been moving through Virgo for the entire month, you know, maybe a month to six weeks. And so Venus and Mercury, are, as of Saturday morning, will be in the very last degree of Virgo. They're ready to change signs into Libra. Venus is coming home to Libra. And in Libra, she will uh, make, begin to make her appearance as the evening star. It'll be hard to see until we're almost into Scorpio because she'll still be very close to the sun. But if you really watch for her and have some binoculars, you'll be able to see it. So she and Mercury are right together at 29 Virgo. 
um, Mars is still effectively conjunct the Sun at 17 11 Virgo and Juno is at 9. Juno is a sign uh, of the planet of social issues around women and children and social justice and money and the sacred marriage. She was mar she had a challenging marriage to the king of the gods over uh, who's over in Sagittarius moving away from his conjunction with the great attractor that's Jupiter. Um, so she is, let's talk about Juno for a minute because this is the Divine Feminine Astrology reading. Juno is in a square to Ceres at 9, new interesting, 9-11 Sagittarius, who, who is in a square to Nessus at 9 Pisces. So we have Juno opposite Nessus and Nessus and Juno are both in a square to Ceres that's called a T-square. And that is like a bundle of energy. These, these planets are just locked together and they are going to be looking for something to release that energy. So what do they stand for? Nessus is healing the lineage of abuse and taking full responsibility for that healing. Juno, social justice, women and children, money, and the sacred marriage. In other words, the right relationship to masculine and feminine, which if we have right relationship to masculine and feminine inside of ourselves, in our intimate relationships, on a planetary communal level, then Ceres, who stands for nourishment, growth, the earth, feeding the people, and the care of women and children, mothers and babies, and the healing of the past, that's not an issue. If we have Juno in place, and Juno is staring at Nessus and saying, motherfucker, I've got you. I, I, I see, why do I see oppositions that way? It's like, I see you, you are in my sights. Now, it's a time of projection. Uh, I, I have a sun opposite moon. My moon is full moon in Virgo and my sun is in Pisces. And when I see, I, I have looked at the moon and said, I love you, I don't understand you for my entire life. So in a way, what is opposite us is mirroring. I, I see it as a mirror which is another way of saying projection. You project out, it comes back. You reflect out, it comes back. And you see what you have projected. But squares are not projections. Squares are saying there's a lot of energy and work to be done here. What are you going to do about it? What decisions are you going to make? What action are you going to take? Um, I have some friends who are taking some pretty big action around this. She just announced it yesterday, and I'm not at liberty to share yet. I need more information. Uh, but as soon as I have websites and such, I will share what people I know are doing to take action. And they're about Juno, social justice, mothers and children, and healing the lineage of racism and hypocrisy and abuse on a national level. Well, by the way, Nessus, Nessus is retrograde. He is half a degree from the U.S. natal Nessus. Um, the, in the U.S. Sibley chart, Nessus is at 9-0 Pisces. And so he's, he's touching back again. This entire Trump administration has been Nessus, a, a second Nessus return for the United States. What are we going to do about the issues that have come into focus with the kind of political situation that we have? Oh, that's, God, and whenever I bring up Nessus, Nessus is in my home sign, possibly for the rest of my life, for the next 25 years. Um, 
So I will be really, it's a core of my work with people. It's a core of the work I'm doing on myself in the last half of my life and the core of what I'm helping people with. So um, what else is happening? I, I guess the thing is to watch. Watch what's going on because when things are kind of crystallized in a chart by a moment like, um, like a new moon or a full moon, they impact. It's, it's like a door and it's like we're going through the door with all this baggage and the baggage is described by what the other planets are doing. And so we carry that energy and, the, and those other aspects are energized, even, even if they're not exactly in aspect. So there's kind of a triple, there is definitely a triple um, T-square going on because you've got the moon, Neptune, um, the moon, Neptune, Black Moon, Lilith, and Nessus all close enough to be a loose conjunction. Um, Neptune has a wide orb at 17, 12 Pisces. It's, it gathers in all the planets in Pisces and turns it into a massive conjunction. And these planets are all aspecting Jupiter, the great attractor in Ceres. And then they're all opposite the planets that I've just described in Virgo. So this we are coming up, uh, by, by Sunday, there will be an exact opposition between Mars and Jupiter. They're already within a minute of each other in their opposition, 1711 and 1712, respectively. So look at this. You've got the queen of the gods who is intense, the sacred marriage, getting her feminine shit together to um, kind of tame and domesticate Jupiter in a way, who was a randy son of a bitch. And, um, and Mars, who is focus and fire, the quintessential masculine energy directed purposeful, intense, warlike even, it, it, warrior, warrior energy in it will be all action, go to battle for the cause, whatever that battle looks like. And then the sun, which is fire, identity, the lion, um, shining the bright light on everything. And then over in Pisces, you got the moon the oceanic watery moon, who is even more watery, more emotional. I, I wonder if Pisces isn't the emo most emotional sign for the moon to land in. Neptune, who is um, visionary, creative, can dreamlike. Um, works very much with the unconscious, which can be a powerhouse if, when you know how to use it and keep your consciousness um, connected to the unconscious and allow the two to work together, allow attention, uh, intuition and intention to work together. And Jupiter can, I mean, sorry, Neptune can also be delusion and illusion and fog. You can't see through the fog. And so it can make the moon more emotional, more, um, more projection going on, more making stuff up, more hurt feelings, more taking things personally, not knowing, did, did I just really hear what I thought I heard? Did they just really do what it looks like they did? And you know, and making it about you. And then Black Moon Lilith. Now she is the divine feminine before patriarchy. She is the goddess in the void of the ethers, universal, coming into focus 
and creating form over and over again, all of life, every atom, every planet, every galaxy, every person, every bug, every microbe, black moon Lilith expressed. So it's supreme feminine, but she's coming through this focused vortex, which is incredibly masculine type of energy to focus each one of us according to our pattern, um, our design. And then she's there with Nessus, which is our lineage of, um, and, and it's, it's not exclusively what Nessus is about, but in the context of patriarchy, we see that Nessus is a creature of patriarchy. He is carrying all the energy of the abuses of patriarchy upon the planet and how that plays out in our individual histories. So we've got a pile of emotion, an ocean of emotion and power and feminine over in Pisces and a ton of masculine just opposite over in Virgo. But it's in the quintessential feminine sign, the virgin, the goddess, the priestess. So I see this as a time to get really clear. Use this full moon, um, nebulous emotional energy to clear emotions, to feel emotions, to weep, to grieve, to rejoice, to balance what's going wrong, what you are grieving about, what um, what has upset and distressed you with what you have to celebrate. Be make sure you look at your accomplishments and how far you've come and how well you're managing no matter what's going on. And, and then be prepared. Say, what is the action I need to take? Ask to be shown the action. And it may not be the time to act. Everything is moving into the Libra uh, Aries axis. And the, you know, the moon is gonna shift out of Pisces by the end of the weekend. So wait for the sun to move a little further. Wait for the moon to get over near Chiron and then begin to see clearly what action do you need to take because Ceres, Earth is saying Action, take action, do something, do the right thing, do the thing you are meant to do, you are supposed to do here. Um, there are some other aspects I'm going to get to. Let me check out on what the comments are saying. Can't see through the fog, trying to make sense of things, yeah. Well, one thing that the fog tells us is slow down. If you're driving in the fog, you're not driving at the speed limit. You're creeping along. And the other interesting thing about fog, to keep the vehicle metaphor going, is that we have headlights. And the headlights actually illuminate the fog and bounce back at you, which makes it even harder to see. But usually you can see the next step. You can see, you know, the, the distance your tires, if you're in a car, the distance your tires will roll time after time. And you can see, oh, there's a line over here and there's a ditch over here. I've got to stay between those two things. Stay in my lane, slow down. So I will offer that advice for this full moon, especially uh, for people who are at perhaps a decision point or things appear like they're falling apart or things that were clear last week aren't clear this week anymore or they haven't been clear for a year, slow down. And use the other senses. You see, fog is a problem with visible light. It's not a problem to the intuition. The intuition is probably better with fog. It's less distracted. So get into your body and use your intuition and slow down your forward motion until it's clear. 
Oh, you've, well, okay. Here's what the New Age people would say. <laughs> you were trying to go too fast when it wasn't clear where you should go. So the universe slowed you down so you could let the events catch up. Sometimes we're forging ahead with what we want, what we think we want, but things aren't lined up for the past, so we have to just stop and wait. This person that I need to meet isn't, isn't where I'm going yet. You know, this, um, this set of circumstances that's going to provide some money and other resources is just not mature yet. Uh, I haven't finished... I haven't completely let go and forgiven and released some stuff. Ooh, sorry, that was a spider coming down right on my head. <laughs> I love you, spider. You are literally my spirit animal. But <laughs> okay, what does that mean? When the animal, what was I saying? Oh my, that was for me. I haven't let go of some stuff that. I've been working on and I'm wanting to forge ahead while still dragging behind all these things. And here comes my guide, <laughs> the spider saying, can I get your attention here? <laughs> and that could be for you too, all of you who are listening to this. So what else is it important? I want to talk about Mercury and Venus and Pholus because Mercury and Venus are together at 29 Virgo and Pholus is at 29 Sagittarius. Pholus is another one of those centaur planets. He's like Nessus uh, and Chiron astronomically. Um, and he was, he is mythic, mythologically, he's named, the planet is, <gasps> excuse me, named for a centaur who got drunk and hiccuped and caused a big problem. So Pholus stands for a small act has a big effect. And that's really important when Neptune is so prominent as he is right now. So I think this is about watching. I, I'm curious because these are general, cultural, societal readings when because the full moon happens to everybody. And so Venus, the divine feminine, abundance, beauty, love, sex, all that we consider beautiful and desirable about the feminine. Mercury, the messenger, and Venus and Hermes, or Mercury, had a lot to do with each other in mythology. She was always sending him around, um, people running back and forth with Venus carrying messages all the time, because uh, everybody wanted some of what Venus had. <laughs> so Pholus is about the impact of those messages, that connection, that energizing and perhaps speeding up of feminine qualities. Something's going to happen. Something's already been happening. And I don't, other than Kamala Davis, um, would you like a specific reading? There's a couple of ways right now. Can I just do a plug? One way you can get it is enroll in Sacred Pleasure Sovereign Womb and I'm giving a reading as a bonus. Uh, and the other is the Desire and Destiny program, which you can find on my website. And I'll put a link up if you want. Um, so let's, let's see how that will go. And, you know, there may be other options, but those are the two big ones that come to mind. Um, So 29 Pholus, something, something that's going on in the Venus 
and, and possibly related to the change of signs because that's going to really shift the energy. Venus is going into her home sign of Libra. So maybe it's about relationship. Maybe it's about our relationships, our personal romantic connect, uh, intimate relationships. It could be a prominent relationship, not the U.S. and China. That's too big, but... Um, I just feel like when Pholus is involved, it's like, I want to see what's happening next. What's happening next? Something is about to happen. Something, there is a small cause, a seemingly insignificant thing that can have a very big impact. And in the Pholus story, that impact was negative. It was a war and lots of centaurs were killed. Chiron was received his famous wound but I don't think it has to be seen as a bad thing it could be wow something amazingly wonderful is happening and who saw that coming we are such doom and gloom disaster mongers our human brains always looking for what can kill me out there <laughs> what can hurt me what's safe um, I'm going to speak, there's so many other things to speak to, but I'm going to wind it up by speaking again to Vesta and Algol. They are kind of floating. We've got, we've got the uh, T-squares. These are all the oppositions right on the um, axis there. And then there is this thing called a mystic rectangle. Uh, that includes, I'm going to mention it because it includes the sun and the moon, Magdalena, feminine Christ consciousness, and Pluto Cariclo. Uh, Pluto is death and transformation. Cariclo is the feminine healer, the consort of Chiron. Um, so that is a supportive flow. It's constantly moving. It's connecting the sun and the moon and all of these energies that we've just described at the full moon. And it is, it's like it's offering a prayer, feminine Christ consciousness, and then Pluto. And where Pluto is, there's something that has to die, something that you have to leave behind. And whether or not the thing dies, your attachment to it must be removed, must be let go. And Caraclo is basically saying, you know, it, it hurts to do that. You may feel like you're dying, but I am here to support you and heal the pain and the wound, and you can move forward now. And Caraclo, during this entire time that Pluto has been in Capricorn, well, not entire time, but at least all of this year, 2019, Caraco and Pluto have been moving back and forth in conjunction as they go through their retrogrades. They are in a, a time in their orbits when they are just lined up. And I think that is the saving grace of the very intense astrology that's continuing in Capricorn over the next two or three years. Um, so outside of this set of T-squares and the mystic rectangle, we still have Algol and Vesta. Now, Algol and Vesta, Vesta has moved past Algol, but they're still within a degree of each other. Uh, this is the goddess of sacred devotion, erot erotic flame, fueling your sacred purpose and devotion to your path. And in this case, when she comes in contact with Algol, the demonized goddess, she is saying, I am devoted to the demon in me. I am devoted to the divine feminine who has been rejected and refused and equated with evil during the entire era of the patriarchy. And so she inspired me to create a masterclass um, 
reunion with the dark goddess because we are called to reunite with the dark goddess, our personal journey going deep into our darkness and calling forth, saying, declaring that the divine feminine is not demonic. She is not, she is terrifying, but our devotion to her and our capacity to grow and to remember what it is like to embody the divine feminine is it turns that fierceness into power. She is terrifying and when we honor her, when we show her that we see her, she she turns into the mother. She's the great mother. Um, and so a system that says the great mother, the great healer, as you say, Corinne, is a demon, is a perverted and sick system. And so we are called at this time of devotion. It's edgy, it's scary, and we need to do our inner work around this so that we can show up together collectively and make a stand. What ha happens inside of us calls forth a way that we show up in the world. And if you are feeling the urge or the impulse or the calling or feeling guilty because you're not showing up in the world, maybe this is part of where the fog can show up. If you haven't gone deep and done some of that deep root work. And so here I'm going to mention again an opportunity to do that work. I am opening up my eight week deep dive immersion into the sacred feminine of our body, our sexuality, our womb, and beginning to open up sexual healing and womb wisdom to women who are perhaps unfamiliar with it, new on the path. Uh, it starts the week of the equinox, and that's in about 10 days, and the doors are opening today. I will put a link up um, in these comments and also just start looking at the page. I will be talking about it and putting up the links um, for the next 10 days. However, during the full moon window, during these first three days that the doors are open, if you go ahead and make the decision to join the program, you will receive a bonus of a Divine Feminine Astrology reading, which is worth the price of the program itself. It's, it's like two for the price of one. And I'm doing that for a limited time because I want to encourage people to go ahead and make a decision. And I want, um, I want to give you the reading. Uh, I want people to have it. So hi, Jane, you're here. Good to see you. So this is still active and it's kind of in its own place. It is at the moment, it's not in a major aspect to any of these other aspects. It's just out there in Taurus, the two of them alone, together, preparing, preparing for the women to rise, for the men to circle around them and say, we're with you sisters. We are bringing the great mother back. We have not forgotten. We're starting to remember. And so with that as a kind of a keynote, still active, still calling us, the action-oriented masculine focused bright light intense planets in Virgo and the watery oceanic emotional planets in uh, some kinds of kind of dark planets in Pisces are saying uh, yeah do the work look into the mirror into your darkness and find your inner truth do your inner healing and get ready to show up and be not afraid so that's the Divine Feminine Full Moon in Pisces Astrology Reading. Thank you for being here with me. And do put your comments 
uh, when you're watching the recording later. I love to hear what you've got to say, and I will check in with you later to see how it's going. Thank you. Blessed, blessed full moon. Bye.